The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is the beginning of our gospel reading for this past Sunday, the 18th Sunday after Pentecost. We're looking at Mark chapter 9, verses 30 and 31, where Mark writes, Jesus and his disciples left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples. He said to them, The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days he will rise. My dear friends in Christ, Jesus at the time of our reading was quite a ways into his earthly ministry, his his public ministry. This was perhaps about two and a half years into his, what appears to have been a three-year public ministry. And, and that means that there was about six months that lay ahead, six months worth of time before Jesus' suffering and death, before his crucifixion. But now here we're at a point where this was a little bit maybe more stressful, stressful for Jesus. What happened is that a man came to Jesus who had a son who was possessed by an evil spirit. And that boy's father said to Jesus, Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of his speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. When Jesus told the father, bring the boy to me, Mark says, so they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, <clears throat> it immediately threw the boy into a confusion. He fell to the ground and rolled around foaming at the mouth. Then Jesus cast the demon out of that boy, freed him from his demon possession. But it had to be hard for Jesus in this instance to look at that young boy and see him possessed by, by a demon, by a cohort of Satan. It had to be tough for Jesus to see the effects of Satan and sin on that boy and, well, on the people in general. And it still has to be very hard for us when we think about it to see the effects of Satan and sin on the world around us today. And, well, of course, it's also coming after us as well. And that's why we would say of those disciples, they needed more time with Jesus. We need more time with Jesus. And we need that time. The disciples needed that time so that Jesus could instruct them, so that he could build them up and strengthen them in their faith. At this time, understandably, Jesus didn't want to be in the public eye. He wanted to spend a little bit of time, maybe because of the stressful situation, but he wanted to spend a little bit more time with his disciples, teaching them, preparing them, because, well, his ministry was quickly running to a close. He needed to prepare those disciples so that they would be able to continue in his ministry, continue doing the work of the Lord. Jesus and his disciples, they traveled through Galilee. Jesus wanted to find a place, a more private place, where he could be with those disciples. And he had so much to tell them, and he didn't have a lot of time anymore. Our reading says, Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples. As I said, he wanted to prepare them because he was completing his work. 
And it was time for them to continue on, for them to do their preaching and teaching after Jesus would ascend into heaven, after he would physically leave them. Of course, he was still always with them, but he wouldn't physically be with them as he had been, well, throughout the course of his ministry. But during his time with them, Jesus spent time teaching them using pictures and parables to try to teach them. And, and on a couple of occasions, he had told them already about his suffering and death and resurrection. He had told them about those things, but they weren't able to grasp or understand what he was talking about. Actually, that picture of him suffering and dying and rising, it was more that the, than their human minds could comprehend. And now when you think about that, we're so fortunate today that we live in the time of fulfillment instead of the time of prophecy because we can look back and we can see what Jesus did. It's easier to believe some of those things after something has been accomplished. And now, when I talk about it being easier to believe, I'm not talking about saving faith here. I'm just talking about being able to accept what has happened as being fact. And oh, maybe just for an example, I can think of the Michigan State University Spartan football team. If someone would have told you before the season began that the Spartans were going to have as good a season as they've had so far already, you never would have believed it. And now here we are, we can look at it and we can say, oh yeah, four wins already, four straight wins to begin the season. And now if somebody were to tell you that they're going to win the national championship, well that you're not going to believe until you'd see it if that would end up happening. But now isn't that what happened with, with Thomas, doubting Thomas? He was told by the disciples, the other disciples, that Jesus had risen from the dead. He was told that on Easter Sunday afternoon or evening, but he wouldn't believe it until he had actually seen it. What Thomas needed was more time with Jesus so that Jesus could build him up and strengthen him. Well, all of those disciples, they needed more time with Jesus so he could work on their hearts. Jesus told them, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days, he will rise. Those words, they're so clear to us. There's nothing hard to understand there. But the disciples, to the disciples, they, they were impossible for them to understand at this point in time. Again, what they needed was time with Jesus. They needed to keep hearing from Jesus about what he was going to do to save them from their sins. And we're just like those disciples. We need time with Jesus. We need time with Jesus. And what I mean by that is we need the law preached to us so that we'll see our sins. And we need the gospel preached to us so that we also see our Savior. We need that law and gospel preached and proclaimed to us over and over and over again. And when we say that, we'd have to say thank you, God, for all the opportunities that you give us to hear the word of God, to worship you, well, in person, online, through conference calls, in our homes. Thank you for all of those opportunities because through the Word of God, through our being close to you, being near to you, that's how God the Holy Spirit works to build us up and strengthen us in our faith. You know, we're all like those disciples. We're plagued by confusion and questions. We need time with Jesus. But thank God he gives us opportunities to be close 
well, to our Savior and His Word and to our fellow Christians so that through the Word of God, the Holy Spirit can work to build us up and strengthen us in our faith in our Savior Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, like the disciples, we need time with Jesus. Thank you for the many opportunities that you give us to read and study your word in our homes and in our churches and through YouTube and conference calls, whatever manner of way to hear the word of God you play to give us. Move us to take advantage of those opportunities. And as we continue to deal with this virus, help more and more of us feel more comfortable in gathering with our fellow Christians to encourage one another. We need that. We need time with Jesus. We need time with one another. Thank you for the time you give us to grow in your grace and love. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.